Buckingham Palace has given more details of the official visit to Southern Africa that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will make later this month. Prince Harry, 34, Meghan Markle, 38 and the son Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, for months, will go to Angola and Malawi and undertake a short working visit to Botswana between September 23rd and October 2nd, the palace said in a statement suggesting it would be an opportunity for the Duke and Duchess to highlight many of the causes they've been involved with for years. The statement read, this will be their Royal Highness's first official tour as a family. The statement added, in a particularly significant and poignant journey, the Duke of Sussex will have the opportunity to return to Angola to see first-hand the legacy of his mother the late Diana, Princess of Wales, whose visit to Wambu in 1997 helped raise awareness of the threat posed by landmines to communities and lives hoods, in a post shared on the Sussex Royal Instagram account, the Duke and Duchess said they're excited to announce the details of the 10-day tour before sharing a series of photographs, including a poignant snap of Princess Diana. Monday, the 23rd of September, the first day of the tour will begin in a township in Cape Town where their Royal Highnesses will view a workshop that teaches children about their rights, self-awareness and safety and which provides self-defense classes and female empowerment training to young girls in the community. Their Royal Highnesses will later tour the District 6 Museum to learn about their work to reunite members of the community forcibly relocated during the apartheid era. The Duke and Duchess will join a community cooking activity with former residents of District 6 at the nearby homecoming centre. Share this article Share 34 shares Tuesday the 24th of September in the morning. Their Royal Highnesses will travel to Monwabiti Beach to learn about the work of Waves for Change, an NGO which trains and supports local surf mentors to provide mental health services to young people. The Duke and Duchess will also see the work of the Lunchbox Fund, one of four charities to benefit from the generous donation made by the public on the occasion of the birth of their son Archie Mountbatten Windsor. The fund provides nearly 30,000 meals every day to Waves for Change programs and schools in South Africa's townships and rural areas. They will also meet Dr. Thomas Mice, who is leading the Commonwealth Litter Program launched at the London Commonwealth Summit in 2018 in support of the Commonwealth Blue Charter. The program funds research and action to tackle plastic waste in six Commonwealth countries, working with support from the South African Department of Environmental Affairs to tackle plastic waste and educate communities on the impact of microplastics in oceans, the Sussex Royal Instagram post. Today, we are excited to be able to announce details for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's upcoming tour to Africa. In just two weeks, their Royal Highnesses will embark on this official tour focusing on community, grassroots leadership, women's and girls' rights, mental health, HIV, AIDS and the environment. This program has been many months in the making, and the Duke and Duchess are eager to focus their energies on the great work being done in Southern Africa, from meeting with Archbishop Desmond Tutu to joining Waves for Change on Monwabiti Beach. The South Africa program will be educational and in Inspiring. The Duke is especially proud to continue the legacy left by his mother with her work in Angola as he joins Halo Trust again in an effort to rid the world of landmines. HRH will also travel to Malawi where he will check in on the British Army's partnership with African Parks and will be working on the ground supporting local communities. The Duke is particularly proud to be able to deliver an exciting new initiative, a Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Three Country Partnership, which he designed and consulted with governments in Namibia, Botswana and Angola to protect forest and wildlife corridors around the Okavango Delta. The Duchess will be working with local organizations to promote women and girls' health and education, entrepreneurship and leadership. With such a textured culture and history, their Royal Highnesses are grateful for the opportunity to connect with those on the ground in Southern Africa and to be inspired by the work being done and learn how they can be better supported. As President and Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust and the Duke's role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, the Duke and Duchess cannot wait to meet with young leaders mobilizing change and adding to the beauty of these Commonwealth countries. We look forward to seeing you soon. The Duke will then join the City of Cape Town Marine Unit to travel by boat to Seal 
Turtle Island, Cal Bay, to learn about the important role they play in combating the poaching of abalone, considered one of South Africa's most significant illegal wildlife trade concerns which have reached critical levels, the UK has been supporting South Africa's work in this area. As Captain General of the Royal Marines, His Royal Highness will be accompanied by two members of the Royal Marines who have been providing capacity building and skills training to the marine unit in the afternoon. The Duke and Duchess will visit the Bocarp area to mark Heritage Day, a celebration of the great diversity of cultures, beliefs and traditions that make up the Rainbow Nation of South Africa. Their Royal Highnesses will visit Awel Mosque, the oldest mosque in the country, where they will meet representatives from different faith groups to hear about the strength of interfaith dialogue in Cape Town. Afterwards, the Duke and Duchess will visit local residents who will host them for a cup of tea in their home. Bokarp was named a South African Heritage Protection Site earlier this year, ensuring that its unique characteristics are preserved for future generations. Their Royal Highnesses will conclude the day by attending a reception at the British High Commissioner's residence, where they will meet inspiring opinion formers and young future leaders, underlining the rich and diverse nature of the UK's modern partnership with South Africa. Wednesday 25 September the Duke and Duchess will meet Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Mrs Tutu at their Legacy Foundation. The Duke last met Archbishop Tutu in 2015 when he presented him with an honour in recognition of his services to UK communities and international peace and reconciliation. From here, their Royal Highnesses programme will split. The Duke will travel onwards to Botswana while the Duchess remains in South Africa. On the afternoon of the 25th of September, the Duchess will visit the Woodstock Exchange to meet female entrepreneurs and investors working in technology. Her Royal Highness will highlight the benefits of networking between aspiring female entrepreneurs and successful female role models. Thursday, the 26th of September, the Duke will begin his working visit to Botswana, first traveling to Chobia Forest Tree Reserve, where he will join school children to plant trees and raise awareness of the fragility of these vital ecosystems. His Royal Highness Highness will then pay a visit to a local project run by his charity Centre Bale which focuses on improving the mental health of young people affected by HIV. From there, he will travel to Chobi National Park where he will dedicate an area of forest to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, situated near the border of Namibia, Zambia and Zimbabwe. This will help link areas of the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy across borders to facilitate the passage of wildlife, vitally widening the range of their habitats. The party will then depart for Angola. In Dirico, in southeastern Angola, the UK charity Halo Trust is initiating a program of demining for conservation, funded by the Angolan government which has the ambition to become landmine free by 2025. Angola has recently announced $60 million of new funding to protect areas of natural value, making them safe for residents, tourists and wildlife and helping to bring new streams of funding through ecotourism. His Royal Highness will spend the evening of the 26th of September at a new Halo Trust Demoning Camp on Thursday 26. Her Royal Highness will take part in a private women in public service breakfast at the High Commission in Cape Town. Women have played an important role in South Africa's socio-economic and political development. Invited guests have all played a key role in the development of South Africa's institutions in Parliament, Government, Education and Health Care and continue to advocate for women's rights and education as well as gender equality. Friday the 27th of September Day 5 will begin early with a visit to a working demining field outside Dirico. The Duke will remotely detonate a mine and meet members of the community. His Royal Highness will give remarks about the importance of continuing the mining. The Duke will then unveil the unique, three-country Queen's Commonwealth Canopy project designed by His Royal Highness which includes Angola's Luang Luyana National Park. The site of the demining initiative representatives from Botswana and Namibia will join Angolan ministers to celebrate this collaboration and additional protection for national parks abutting the Okavango Delta, with the objective of creating safe and green corridors for wildlife and, importantly, communities. Princess Diana's visit to Angola Diana famously walked through a cleared landmine area in the African country to highlight the problem with the military munitions. The visit took place just months before she died in a car crash in Paris. 
one of the enduring image of Princess Diana's work in Africa is that of her wearing a protective visor and green vest as she walked through a minefield. During her visit Diana helped focus attention on the issue of landmines sitting with Sandra Tijika, who was 13 years old at the time and had one of her legs blown off by a mine. She also detonated a landmine in front of international reporters and TV crews to highlight the explosive device's destructive power. In 2017 on International Mine Awareness Day, Harry said his mother's work on banning landmines in the last months of her life wasn't universally popular. Harry added that she knew she had a big spotlight to shine, and she used it to bring attention on the people that others had forgotten, ignored, or were too afraid to support. His Royal Highness will then travel to Wambu, beginning his first visit to Angola in an official capacity. Photographs of the late Princess Diana visiting a demining site and meeting mine victims became iconic and powerful. Powerful images in support of her campaign to create a global mine ban which came to fruition in the anti-personnel mine ban convention that same year. On arrival, His Royal Highness will be met by the governor of Wambu, Jonah Lina, who was also the official host for the late Princess Diana's visit. Accompanied by the governor, the Duke will visit the location where his mother was photographed. He will see how an area that was a dangerous minefield in 1997 is now a busy street with schools, shops and houses. A demonstration of the benefits of demoning. His Royal Highness will be escorted to the location by a member of the Halo Trust team, Valdemar Goncalves Fernandez, who was part of the demining teams working in the area during Princess Diana's visit. His Royal Highness will meet representatives of all three demining organizations working in Angola under the UK Global Mine Action Program. He will then proceed to the Wambu Orthopaedic Center, also visited by his mother in 1997. Recently renovated, it aims to become Angola's National Center of Excellence in Orthopaedic Care. His Royal Highness will be greeted by the Minister for Health, the Director of the Orthopaedic Center, and a representative of BP, which has donated equipment to the center. The center's new in honor of Princess Diana, will be unveiled by His Royal Highness, after which he will tour the facilities and make a short speech before departing for Luanda. In the evening, His Royal Highness will attend a reception at the British Ambassador's residence. He will meet business representatives and learn about Angola's economic transformation and business landscape. Saturday the 28th of September on day 6, the morning of Saturday the 28th of September, the Duke will have an audience with President Lorenzo at the Presidential Palace. He will then visit the maternity hospital Lucrecia PIM to see the work of a project spearheaded by First Lady Ana Diaz Lorenzo, born free to shine, which focuses on preventing HIV, AIDS transmission from mothers to babies. Despite Angola's low infection rate, other factors such as high fertility and a young population, combined with a lack of awareness, are driving infection rates up. Rates of mother to baby transmission are the highest in sub-Saharan Africa. The First Lady has just approved a national plan to tackle mother to baby HIV, AIDS transmission. His Royal Highness will then travel to Malawi for the next leg of his tour. This will be the Duke's first official visit to Malawi, although he has made several private visits in the past and enjoys close working relationships with partners on the ground. Sunday 29 September Duke will arrive in Lilongwe on Sunday the 29th of September. That afternoon, he will visit Nalakole College of Education and interact with a network of young women who are supported to attend and complete secondary school with the help of UK bursaries through the Campaign for Female Education. The Duke will see the impact of UK investments to ensure the girls obtain at least 12 years of quality education. The project is supported by the Queen's Commonwealth Trust of which the Duke is President and the Duchess Vice President. The Duke will then attend an audience with the President Peter Mufrika who he has met on previous occasions. In the evening, His Royal Highness will attend a reception hosted by the British High Commissioner. The reception will highlight our common links and strengthen the meaningful, modern partnership between the UK and Malawi. Monday 30 September on day 8 of the program, His Royal Highness will fly to Luande National Park. There at the Duke will pay tribute at the memorial site for Guardsman Matthew Talbot of the Coldstream Guards, who lost his life in May 2019 on a joint anti-poaching patrol.
With local park rangers, guardsmen tall but share the Duke's passion for the role of the British military. Working in partnership with local rangers to protect endangered species, the Duke will then proceed to the Lewande National Park headquarters to receive a briefing on operations. His Royal Highness will witness an anti-poaching demonstration exercise conducted jointly by local rangers and UK military deployed on Operation Corded. To conclude, His Royal Highness will dedicate Lewande National Park and the adjoining Mangochi Forest to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, joining Chimaliro Forest, which was dedicated by the Duke of Gloucester in 2018. Lewande National Park is managed by African Parks. Tuesday, the 1st of October, the Duke will travel to Mao Health Center Pharmacy in a box and youth reproductive health outreach program. Through this project, the UK and US have supported the introduction of solar-powered storage units to provide life-saving medicines where they are most needed. The Duke will tour Mao Health Center and then depart Malawi for South Africa. Meanwhile, on the 1st of October, Her Royal Highness will attend a roundtable discussion with the Association of Commonwealth Universities in Johannesburg. The seven duchess will meet academics and students to discuss the challenges faced by young women in accessing higher education. Her Royal Highness will then visit a school to learn about the work of a local charity which receives UK aid funding for its work to raise awareness of and tackle sexual violence in schools, following the Duke of Sussex's arrival. From Malawi later that evening, their royal highnesses will resume the joint program in Johannesburg. Wednesday, the 2nd of October, their royal highnesses will visit a township near Johannesburg where they will meet with inspiring local youth, entrepreneurs and view skills initiatives addressing the rising unemployment challenge faced by young people in South Africa. Later that day, they will meet with Mrs. Gregor Michelle, widow of the late former President Mandela. The Duke last met with Mrs. Michelle in South Africa in 2015. The Duke and Duchess will together attend an afternoon reception to celebrate the UK and South Africa's important business and investment relationship. Looking ahead to the Africa Investment Summit the UK will host in 2020, their Royal Highnesses will meet representatives of the British and South African business communities, with a particular focus on entrepreneurs and the creation.